today is this third lecture on uh, uh, the lecture series continuity so in the last class we had uh, we were seeing some examples and these two examples we saw that a function the constant function is always continuous and the identity function is also continuous now i mentioned in the in the, in the definition of continuity that the delta depends on both epsilon chosen and the concerned point c that is why this is often called point wise continuous to illustrate this remark i we have the for next example the example is the function x going to 1 by x is a continuous function for x uh, greater than 0 so the domain of this function is uh, all positive real numbers <coughs> Okay, so let's see. Uh, let C be a positive real number. We will be showing the continuity of the function at the point C. So C be an arbitrary positive real number and choose an epsilon uh, greater than zero arbitrary. Fine. Then understand this inequality. So we want to show that the distance between the functional values at x and at C are smaller than epsilon. 1 by x minus 1 by c the distance of them is smaller than epsilon so if you break this one up then 1 by c minus epsilon less than 1 by x less than 1 by c plus epsilon if you take the reciprocal this part will be smaller and this part will be bigger so 1 by 1 over c plus epsilon less than x less than 1 by 1 over c minus epsilon we should be uh, assuming that one epsilon is chosen so that 1 by c minus epsilon is not zero so now you subtract c from all sides and you end up you do some calculation and you end up with this part so minus c epsilon over 1 plus c epsilon is less than x minus c and that is less than c epsilon over 1 plus c epsilon so look at the direction of the implication sign now you see these two are bounds of x minus c so choose delta is equals to c epsilon over 1 plus c epsilon so this is just like minus delta less than x minus c less than delta so this is the mod of x minus c is smaller than delta so x is between c minus delta to c plus delta so if you choose delta equal to c epsilon over 1 plus c epsilon then for all x in the delta neighborhood of c x greater than 0 of course this implies 1 by x minus 1 by c the distance is smaller than epsilon because Uh, understand the implication arrow so this implies this thing so this is our 1 by x minus 1 by c less than epsilon is our goal and that is implied by mod of x minus c less than delta and where delta is your c epsilon over 1 plus c epsilon so now why did i include this example is because of this thing observe that delta depends on both c as well as epsilon you see c times epsilon over 1 plus c times epsilon in the other the last two examples they did not depend but in this example delta expectedly depends on the point chosen as well this red line this is the graph of 1 over x this point is your c this point is your fc this red band over here is your epsilon band around fc and this violet band around this point is your delta so this is c minus delta to c plus delta and this is fc minus epsilon this one is c minus epsilon to fc plus epsilon so this is your case now you see c is at 0.746 if you increase c you see the delta is increasing epsilon value is 0.05 c equal to 1.15 the de delta value is 0.06 now at this point 1.135 okay now at this point let's say uh, when c is equal to 0.6 you see that delta did not work 0.06 did not work it is now 0.0117 okay as c will go closer and closer to zero delta will be diminishing to zero see here 0.008 so this is what happens for continuity at different points delta for a particular point may not work for delta for another point we are going to the next example the function x going to sin x is continuous over r let c be any point to the epsilon arbitrary this is where we want to arrive at so uh, or we always do it this way and we want to imply that from a series of manipulation 
this is something we did in sequences this is something we did in limits this is something we do in continuity as well so modulus of sin x minus sin c is smaller than epsilon this is the formula of sin x minus sin c so that this means this is true this means we have a cos quantity here which is always less than or equal to 1 and we know that mod of sin x is less than mod x so that means if this quantity is uh, smaller than epsilon this will imply that this quantity is smaller than epsilon why understand this thing carefully this quantity is smaller than epsilon so mod x is smaller than epsilon so that means mod of sin x is smaller than epsilon mod x is smaller than epsilon uh, implies sin mod of sin x is also smaller than epsilon because mod of sin x is smaller than mod of x for any value of y this will imply this so that is what i have done here mod of sin x minus sin c is smaller than epsilon cos is smaller than or equal to 1 and mod of sin x is smaller than mod of x so i have get rid of everything and this is this this is implied by mod of 2 sin of x minus c by 2 cos of x plus c by 2 this entire thing smaller than epsilon is implied by 2 times x minus c by 2 this part this part is smaller than epsilon and this is mod of x minus c is smaller than epsilon delta equal to epsilon therefore we can say mod of x minus c less than delta implies mod of sinus minus sin c is smaller than epsilon since epsilon positive is arbitrary the, the function is continuous at c and since c is arbitrary the function is continuous over r as well next up we have got the big theorem sequential criteria of continuity this theorem and the proof of this one will be exactly similar to the proof of uh, sequential criteria for limits. This theorem eases the sums of continuity to a huge extent. We will use this this sequential criteria every now and then to under to do the sums on continuity. So all the formalisms intact. Uh, let d be a non empty subset of R, f is a uh, subset, uh, f is a function from D to R, f is continuous at a point C, if and only for empty sequence Xn in D, converting to C, the sequence Fxn converts this to Fc. What is the difference of this one from the sequential criteria of limit? C was limit point. Yeah, that is the main difference. If you have a limit point, you know, then you have a sequence converting there. X is a limit point of S for every natural number in the 1 by nth neighborhood of X, you will find Xn. X1 is coming from one distance of X, X2 is coming from half distance of X, X3 was coming from uh, one third distance of X, and we can even choose all these Xn distinct from one another. So, therefore, this sequence Xn will convert to X. So, Xn is a sequence of distinct elements. Yeah, which is converging to x. Uh, if x is a limit point, then we always have this thing that a sequence of distinct elements is converged into that point. But if we remove the guarantee of c being a limit point, we do not have the guarantee of having a sequence of uh, distinct elements converging to that point. So, how does this capture the main crux uh, of converging to some point if c? If C is not a limit point, it will be an isolated point. Then the function is automatically continuous there and sequence wise, every sequence going to an isolated point means this is basically a eventually constant sequence. Look at this remark. If C is an isolated point of the domain D, only sequence converging to C is the constant sequence x equals to C. Or uh, to be uh, a little bit more generalized is the eventually constant sequence xn equals to c it may start with some other point but it will be eventually constant sequence xn equal to c that is the only possibility there then fxn will definitely convert to fc there is no doubt about that what i would ask you to go through this proof by yourself because this is exact similar to what we did in limit the sequential criteria, proof of sequential criterion of limits were exactly, exactly similar to this line of argument.